All right, so this is my presentation on vampire bats and their use of reciprocal altruism. So bats belong to the family of Phlocetomids, um, which includes all types of bats, including vampire bats. Um, but just kind of in this family in general, also belongs those that eat on insects, plants, nectar. Um, however, we'll be focusing on vampire bats as they are the ones that actually practice reciprocal altruism. So just as a refresher as far as what reciprocal altruism is, um, it's the temporary reduction of your own fitness, but in the long run, it actually helps your fitness and actually increases your fitness. Um, so as far as we know, it's kind of a, you know, tit for tat, I'll scratch your back if you scratch mine type of system where if one bat um, has a good feed, but another bat doesn't, the bat that had the good feed will um, help and regurgitate the excess blood that they don't need to the bat that had none um, in hopes and on a promise that if the vice versa was to occur, then um, that other bat will be able to help out the bat that's feeding them now. Um, main reason that they do this is if a bat actually doesn't feed on blood um, for two days, they'll actually die. So it actually increases their long-term um, fitness because you know they can kind of um, share the wealth and kind of share it all around. That way, um, overall, it just increases their fitness. That way they don't have to worry about getting blood a night after another. So yeah. Um, also they do have a cheat system. So if someone was to cheat, then as far as, you know, receive blood one time, but decide not to give it, then um, they will not get blood from anyone else in that cave for the most part, which is very interesting. They know that also, researchers know that it occurs, but they don't know exactly why it occurs and how they specifically are able to differentiate between those who have cheated and those who don't cheat and actually abide by the system. So just here is a little video that kind of goes um, into more depth about it and also kind of shows it more plainly. Have you ever shared your dinner with a friend who is hungry? Then you're more like a vampire bat than you might have thought. Vampire bats practice hematophagy, which means they feed exclusively on blood. But unlike their mythical counterparts, vampire bats don't actually suck blood. Instead, they use their razor-sharp teeth to bite mammals, typically horses and cows, although sometimes humans, and then lap up the blood that escapes from the wound. Fortunately for their victims, vampire bats don't take enough blood to kill. But finding enough blood to eat isn't always easy. Vampire bats hunt on most nights, but if they're unsuccessful for more than two nights in a row, they will starve to death. Fortunately, vampire bats, just like people, are often willing to help their friends. In fact, to prevent a fellow bat from starving, female vampire bats will sometimes regurgitate a portion of their most recent blood meal into the mouths of nearby female vampire bats. But proximity alone doesn't guarantee this behavior. Vampire bats use a practice called reciprocal altruism. They learn to recognize bats who've shared with them in the past, and they only share with them. This includes familial relatives and current or former roostmates. Basically, they're friends. So far in the wild, scientists haven't found any evidence that male vampire bats participate in this food sharing process. And while the reason for the divide between sexes isn't completely understood, what is clear is that female vampire bats, like humans, get by with a little help from their friends. Yeah, so that's just kind of the end of the video. Um, but on the next slide is I kind of want to give an example of reciprocal altruism. So just kind of here, um, by the way, the guy on the left is a hairy vampire bat, um, and then the guy on the right is just a common vampire bat that you can find. Um, typically in South America is where they reside, if I remember correctly. Um, anyways, let's say the guy on the left, you know, his name's Joe. The guy on the right, let's say his name's Adam. Um, you know, let's say for, like, the first night, um, Joe is able to obtain 
his full share of blood, you know, yay him. Um, but Adam isn't able to obtain any. So what Joe will do is after he obtains his fill is he'll actually share it with Adam um, on a promise that Adam will return the favor. And so that's kind of it for that first go around. However, let's say Adam gets his fill and Joe um, isn't able to obtain any. Well, Adam decides to not share with Joe. So what Joe decides to then do is Joe will decide to um, go and tell everyone else in the cave and basically tell all of his friends saying, hey, Adam is selfish. He's not sharing anything. So if he ever asks any of you guys, you know, since you're my friends and he kind of um, did me wrong, I don't want you guys to help him out. And so basically everyone else in that cave won't help out Adam which will decrease decrease his individual fitness um, and will make it that much harder to survive. Um, if you guys have any questions on this, you know, feel free to um, text me, email me, um, and 